it out. Get it out. <laughs> oh. We're supposed to be solid, right? We're supposed to be solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, and uh, welcome to church, everybody. Uh, we have a, a great service uh, planned for you. By the way, my name is uh, Latu. And uh, I am the pastor of this church and also the preacher for today. And uh, we have a great service planned for you today. We have the bells performing. We have the choir that's going to be singing for us today. And also... Um, uh, we, we're just celebrating today. It's, 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 uh, today's gospel is all about celebrating, not just St. Patty's Day, just celebrating that Jesus is here with you and I. So today is the, the fifth Sunday in Lent. But before we get started, uh, we have blue cards that were uh, given to you with your bulletin uh, that were given to you by our greeters earlier before you walked in. Uh, please fill out the the blue cards uh, that's been given to you, and then just drop it in the baskets right behind you at the exit doors. We even have uh, prayer and praise cards. If you're new here, they look like these with the praying hands that are in front of you. If you have a prayer or a praise that you want to share with the church congregation, uh, please fill them out and hand them to me during the birthday bank hour. As indicated, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent in Lent, and so. We are close to Palm Sunday, and then we're about to approach Resurrection Sunday, uh, in which that, that is a day that you and I also celebrate. So it's just celebrating, 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 uh, being alive and knowing that Jesus is here with you and I. But before we, we start our worship service, please greet your neighbor left, right, and front to the back. Let them know you're here. Morning again. <laughs> As we get centered for our worship, I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able. As we sing our song of gathering, Here I Am, Lord. Yeah. 
Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, we are gathered in your house to worship, sing, and pray during this season of Lent. We know that your son is on his final journey to meet his fate so that we will all live forever. It is a bittersweet time in our church year, but it is also the time of the true beginnings of our faith. Be with us and also be with those who do not yet know your son's glory. Help us to help them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing while we do the scripture. <clears throat> Today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsidia in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew that Andrew and, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the glorified, I'm sorry, Jesus answered them, this hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what I say, Father, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. In celebration of our children, we have Nancy and her puppet friend. Hi. <laughs> yes, today I brought my friend, the wombat, Miss Bevy. As you may recall, she was born in Atlanta, so she does have a bit of an accent. I do not. Y'all have an accent. Anyway, <laughs> Miss Nancy, I am in a tizzy. Oh, really? Well, what's wrong, Miss Bevy? Well. I have not found the perfect dress or the perfect hat to wear for Easter. And it's only two weeks away, but I hardly have time to look for it just because I am so busy making sure my burrow is the best one in town. You see, everyone expects that everything I have will be the absolute best because uh, they expect me to be the pinnacle of class and, and good taste. And, oh my goodness, uh, there just don't seem to be enough hours in the day. Do you realize how long it takes me to look this good? <laughs> well, I have my sparkling image to keep up. Uh, Miss Bevy, um, I, it sounds kind of like you're, um, you're caught up in, in having stuff and, and impressing people. Well, what are you driving at, sugar? <laughs> um, well, um, Jesus said that what we should do is to follow him. Um, and, you know, Jesus didn't have a lot of things or, or money, and, and he, didn't, he didn't care about people of power or, or, or 
who were important. He didn't care what they thought of him. Um, he, he, were, he set about doing God's work. I mean, he gave his life to do God's will. And so that's what Jesus wants us to do, to, to follow him, to love and serve others. And, uh, you know, that if we follow Jesus, then we can be with Jesus forever. Oh, boy. Oh, well, you have set a mouthful, Miss Nancy. I, I, I suppose I have been hanging on to the wrong things. I mean, what I wear on Easter, that's not important to God. That's right. Yeah, what, well, I mean, what really matters is, is what Easter's all about. And, and what Easter's all about is Jesus. Very well said, Miss Bevy. How about we pray? All righty. Loving God, we thank you for giving us life. Help us to use our lives to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, how do you thank you, Nancy. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are going to the birthday bank. We celebrate uh, many things every week, birthdays, our anniversaries, and pay it forward to this birthday bank ministry, and it helps feed children around the world. Sorry about that, choir. Um, and also the system ministry is fulfilled uh, within that uh, purpose. And so if you have something that you want to celebrate before the church and also in the presence of God, uh, please come forward and also bring your uh, prayer and praise cards with you. Granddaughter Alexa, Alexis, she turned 21. Okay. Uh, and she's in a junior in your norm. Okay. Happy birthday to your great granddaughter. <coughs> yes. Ours and I will be leaving shortly. Uh, we're attending a memorial service of a longtime friend, Frank Hardigan, okay. in Reno. Condolences. My brother James Patrick Maloney was 65 yesterday. My dad, Patrick Maloney, would have been 97 today. Thank you. Free Irish. <laughs> Hi, Claudia. Uh, ben and I uh, became uh, great grandparents. One more kid, Miles Friday, and I think he's the ninth or the tenth okay. great grandchild we have. Okay. Uh, Congratulations on the new great grandchild. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. On Sunday, Alpine kids went swimming in the Hunan, so they had 48 of us. There would have been more, but three families had to cancel due to illnesses. And those twins that you all prayed for who were nine weeks early, they are almost two years old, and they were there. They did not like the cold water in the city pool. <laughs> Hello. I turned 64 Friday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Our daughter, Sarah, turns 38. Today. Okay, yeah. happy birthday to your daughter. My grandson's 23rd birthday. All right, happy birthday to your grandson. All my right. sister uh, Sarah was able to make her flight from Miami to come try on wedding dresses and visit with the family, so I just want to celebrate that. All right, yeah. happy birthday. My sister in law turns 91 this week, and my granddaughter turns 27. Oh, happy birthday to them. <laughs> Happy birthday to your cousin. Yes, this is for my husband's birthday on the 12th and Kinsley's birthday. Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday to your husband, also to Kinsley. It is my son's birthday today. Happy birthday to your son. Not say how old he is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thank you for all the support and everything. For Tamara and I had a good drive over there to San Francisco and back. And mm -hmm. And a safe one, so and I'm, I'm still upright, so yeah, yeah. you're upright. Yeah. Yeah. Evelyn, did I hear correctly? Your great granddaughter turned 21. Mm. Holy cow! <laughs> uh, this is for Tammy Owen's daughter Teresa, she's the head mucky muck at the Animal Ark Rescue Refuge above uh, Reno. And yesterday she was interviewed on Channel 2 News on their opening day. All right. <laughs> I'd like to pray for this birthday bank. Please say aye. aye. All right, let me pray. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, uh, you are the Lord that provides. Uh, you provide uh, food, water, and a home to stay in. Uh, 
church that embraces us, and you, you are a, a loving God, a merciful God. And so we pay it forward to you so that you may bless this birthday bank, Lord, so that it may assist in feeding the children around the world and also the, to fulfill the assistive uh, ministries with those purposes, Lord. So we ask you to bless this birthday bank to remind us to keep on giving because you have given us your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Uh, we are going into our tithes and offerings. Uh, if you are new here, we don't pass the basket around, but we do have certain locations where you can give, uh, and also we have an online giving that's on our uh, church homepage. But we, have, we offer a portion of our talents, and our offertory for today will be performed by the Sierra Ringers, and it's titled, Salvation is Created. Getting to hear the bells play is always one of the reasons that I love doing liturgy full services this day. Sue always asks me which sounded better, and I always tell her the truth. I don't know, they both sounded good to me. And Tammy added the cymbal in, which is about my, my level of play, if you will. <laughs> Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, your bounty is great, and you have blessed us in more ways than we can count. We return to you a portion of that body in the prayer and hope that we use these tithes and offerings as you see fit here and throughout the world. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going into uh, our prayer and praises. I will read the prayers submitted and ask the church congregation to respond with Lord, hear our prayers after reading the prayers. I'll also read the praises, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, We thank you, Lord, after I read the praises. I ask uh, Len to play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds.
Our first prayer is a prayer from Edie and Skip for Jimmy as he starts on hospice today. A uh, prayer, uh, prayer from Robert for his son's uh, mother. Uh, a prayer from, from Ann. Uh, prayers for Brother Bill who passed away Thursday night and uh, for her brothers who are dealing with everything. Uh, another prayer from uh, Ann. It is a prayer for travel mercies and good health during Bangkok to Tokyo cruise. Well, that's lucky. Uh, a prayer from Roger and Allison, uh, a prayer for Roger's mother who died suddenly yesterday afternoon. And these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, for our praises, uh, pray, a praise from Ben and Claudia for the, their new great-grandson, Miles, uh, whose name is Miles, uh, that was uh, born on Friday, March 15th. Okay. Uh, praise from uh, Mike Jessup. Praise for 34 years of marriage with my wonderful wife. Aww. How do you do it? <laughs> yes, yes, dear, I, I was told. So. Okay. Uh, our last praise is... Our praise is for Kim. Matthew, praise for Matthew has been accepted to PT school in St. George, Utah. And I have a praise, uh, a praise that I, I went and uh, blessed the burial place for Barbara Gustafson. Uh, buried her ashes in uh, East Side Memorial Park. And uh, the family wants to express uh, gr a gratitude for the church and, and the thoughts and prayers they have uh, uh, given us uh, a date that they will have a memorial to celebrate her life and that is May 4th and I will, uh, I will, I will also assure how we're going to structure that program but May 4th is when we're going to be celebrating uh, Barbara's memory and, if, and they invite everyone that knows her and also had a close relationship to be here so that um, they can celebrate her. Uh, and the family is very grateful for you all, church. And th these are our praises. We thank you. Uh, before we go on to our Lord's Prayer, I would like to go into a prayer of confession. Would you pray with me, please? Love that knows no boundaries. Jesus, we crowd our lives with so much activity that it is hard to find time for you. We become so focused on ourselves, we can overlook those around us who are searching for hope. We fill our spiritual emptiness with junk rather than feasting on your word. Abundant mercy, forgive us. Open our eyes that we may see your new covenant written in plain sight on our hearts. Open our hearts that we may join you in serving the broken of the world. Open our love so we may pour it out as abundantly and graciously as your love is given to us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I would like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have an anthem for you that will be performed by the Chancel Choir, directed by Tammy Owens. It is titled, My Worth is Not in What I Own.
Please be seated. I know we're trying to get used to the new bulletin formation, but um, if, if, you, if you do not know why we have changed up the bulletin order, it's because uh, we are including our youth and young adults in reading the scripture uh, before they head into Sunday school, um, if you're wondering why. But thank you, choir, for singing that piece. I'd like to acknowledge God in our presence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge this sanctuary. We come to pray and also worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to acknowledge church staff, church volunteers, church attendees, uh, and, and also our viewers from YouTube. Uh, thank you for joining us online. I'd like to acknowledge uh, our youth and young adults who are the present and future of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. Uh, visitors and also friends, uh, thank you for joining us here today. I come to you with a message from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Jesus Christ written by the Apostle John, chapter 12 and verses 20 to 33 that was read to you by uh, our liturgist, Bob, well, Al, uh, but, um, Bob, well, and, but my sermon will be focused on John chapter 12, verse 25, and these are the words, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. My theme for today is losing your life to God. Losing your life to God. One of the Wesleyan celebrations that um, my people, that my Tongan people do as Methodists and Wesleyans once a year is their tithing. And we give... Uh, our stewardship campaign is, is on a roll here in our church, but uh, the stewardship campaign that my people uh, uh, in the Methodist church uh, as Tongans, uh, they donate it once a year. And they, and, and they do it because um, there is an annual uh, day in which Tongans harvest their crops in, in farming and then they anticipate a new year of planting. But during that time when they harvest, they exchange those crops with each other. So you can be in a village, but everyone shares the same plantation area where, where you, you grow your crops and uh, you maintain the field. But at the harvesting day, everyone is sharing. You see people just dumping like yams uh, on somebody else's uh, area. It's just everyone just moving and, and, and they, the, the women decorate the, the area. And uh, it's just a lot of loud music, a lot of food. And it's just a, a day where, where people just dress up abnormally and it's like a holy humor, but in, in the farming area. But my people, uh, as time went by, they've taking that perspective of giving once a year to each other because it feeds the community and also acknowledges that you and I are people of God, that we need to take care of each other. That's, that's the whole uh, concept behind that. But once a year, there is a thing called the Misnale. Now, Misnale is translated in English, missionary. And this is the missionary work in which the, the annual giving is to fund the church and also to keep the church operating if there's a project, we, the, the, the church people know that where their, their money is going. And also, the things that the money is dispersed to uh, is, is also uh, discussed during this time. But it's an annual giving to the church. Donations can range from $1 to $1,000 to $100,000 or half a million dollars. That, that's that's the, the annual giving. Sometimes the, the families are, are gathered in one small group and they give as a group instead of concentrating on, on just one family. So there's many ways of doing it. Um, but there's food, loud music, and traditional dances. I've, I've spoken to Len and, um, and also Al uh, that one day, if probably in the next coming year or, 
or in the future that we will probably attend a misinale uh, in which so that they can experience uh, being full and you're going to eat a lot of food and also uh, coming back deaf because there's going to be a lot of loud music. So, um, but today's gospel is in the heart of Jesus's ministry. There is a celebration occurring for the whole community. This celebration is called the Feast of Tabernacles, which is celebrated four days after Yom Kippur, commemorating the wandering or the wandering days or the years of the Israelites in the Sinai Desert before entering the Promised Land. And this is celebrated once a year. Uh, this seven-day celebration is referred in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33 to 34, which says, 30, uh, which says the, the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Lord's festival of tabernacles begins and it lasts for seven days. Seven days of celebration, seven days of eating, seven, seven days of being with God. And, and this is, if you, if you know what celebration is, it is, it is not like a celebration where you go to a birthday party and then you, you end it at like 7 p.m. No, this is the type of party that every high school or college kid dreams of, an all-week party of just celebrating the Lord being present. And, and it's going to take time for me to, to explain what happens in this. And so, so bear with me, my church family. One of the celebrations within the, the Feast of Tabernacles is called Sukkah, in which this part of the festival is, has roots of a fall celebration of harvest where Jewish farmers are, are harvesting their crops and they are anticipating for a new planting fertile year. Uh, you can find the celebration of Sukkot uh, today being celebrated in Jewish communities uh, in which they would build little tents and they decorate it. It's like a tent-like booth and they decorate it, mimicking the shelters uh, built during the wandering years in the wilderness. The festival over time is shared among other ethnicities, including their neighboring co communities, as in today's gospel, the Greeks or the Gentiles. Uh, traditionally, uh, during Sukkot, there would be a tabernacle put in the middle in the camp in the wilderness. The tribes of Israel would build their tents around it. So it, the formation that I've gotten and discussed with uh, certain biblical professors is there's a... Let's, for example, there's a tabernacle right here, and the formation of building your, uh, your sukkot or your little tent is vertically and, 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 and laterally. So you would have tribes around this tabernacle in a cross formation, and they are all facing the tabernacle. And the objective is, is that the tabernacle is where God would be physically present for those seven days. And during this celebration, uh, it, is, it is enjoying a meal with God. It's enjoying God's presence within them. He is walking with them. He is with them physically for those days to celebrate, uh, according to Leviticus. Now, let's fast forward today in today's gospel. They are still celebrating this uh, tradition which is called the Sukkot, but the objective is not to wait for God to be present. The objective has changed over time. These are, this is during the, after the second temple that has been built. This, these are, these are uh, post-exiled ancestors of, of the Jewish exiles. And so the anticipation now is, is not concentrated not only on farming and also planting on new fertile uh, soil, the anticipation is a call for help now. They are in a, a province that's part of the Roman uh, province. They, are, they do not have their land rights, and they're all divided. The, the Jewish community is divided in different sects and, and different communities, and, and it's just pure chaos during this time, right? And But the praise... To be, it's a praise and a call for help to God to help them in a time of need. They needed a Messiah during this type of uh, feast. It is a, the celebration has turned into a call for help. Now, the, uh, 
The anticipation now is to call for help, but the praise to God is now to rescue them. They are practicing it, but the tabernacle now is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus is preaching that uh, in his words that, that in order to draw closer to God, in, in which Jesus is translating, you are celebrating this. You're building your sukkots. You have a tabernacle still. But why are you doing that when the tabernacle is here? He's walking with you, and he's here. And Jesus is, is saying in, in these words to them, uh, those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life, which is our key verse. It is now, not, now Jesus is speaking, okay, why are you practicing it? I am here. So now it's, it's not a traditional perspective of custom. Now it's a faith-based custom in which now I'm here. What are you going to do now? You've been waiting for me to come. And so as Christian believers, as Christ believers, we believe that the tabernacle has been here. He has accomplished it on a cross. And now we will be celebrating in a couple of Sundays his resurrection. But Jesus is telling me, the help is here. And those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Now, today's sermon is divided into two parts. Number one, losing your life to God. Number two, living your life in Jesus Christ. Now, I know the theme seems misinterpreted or, or abnormal or probably uh, uh, kind of disturbing, but, but it, it, it is how it states now, losing our life to God is not to harm ourselves or to submit into physical suffering. Losing our lives to God means trusting that God does not need us to do everything, only the things we are called to do. In our Lenten observance, you would find it more comforting that pursuing your devotions or fasts in, in our 40 days becomes uh, supportive when you call on God for strength. It reminds us that our walk in faith is a time to practice our surrender to God on a daily basis. Now, the idea of losing our lives to God is to let God, is to let go and let God. Let God, let go and let God. The thought of losing life, a life to God, symbolically speaking, is living life for God. Living beyond sin, but living for God. As humans, we live, our, we live for our money, we live for our wealth, our political affiliations, our friends or families, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, when all is gone, what is left? Now, I would propose that through our lifetime, God is the only one left. Now, I want you to look at your neighbor and say these words. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. neighbor. Let's, live for God. Let's live for God. Now, what Jesus is proposing in today's key verse after all of this traditional things that I've been talking about, what, what Jesus is proposing in today's verse is that in order to live a new life in God, one must transition from being individualistic to holistic. In order for us individually to contribute in a he, to healing this world, a messy world that you and I live in, the world uh, has to to endure our standard, our standards have to be rerouted for um, to contribute to the healing of this world. It has to be rerouted in the expectations of God through Jesus Christ. Now, my question is for you, my church family, is uh, how uh, who are you living your life for? Um, do you take time with your family to say family prayer or devotion? Do you have conversations? Let's say, for example, in the dinner table about Jesus. Like, how do you deal as a family when you go into a world that tells you, no, Jesus is not real? Now, this, this uh, brings us to our Lenten season. Lenten season is not only a personal time with God, but it is a full spiritual molding of your walk with Christ. What Christ is saying in today's gospel is that your life that you love may bring you happiness, but a life that is in obedience to God through Jesus Christ will be fruitful. Now let me backtrack on that, okay? What Christ is saying today in today's gospel is that your life may be happy, 
You might be comfortable with your life today, but a life that is in obedience to God through Jesus Christ will be fruitful. Now, this brings me into my second part, living our life in Jesus Christ. Not only in today's gospel uh, calling us to lose our life to God, but it, it, is, it is a call to change our perspective of what we call church. It is calling us to live our lives in Jesus Christ. Now, as we read in the beginning of today's gospel, that there was a festival going on. It is a time that the Israelites celebrate their harvest from their crops and await new rain to plant on fresh soil. Everything that Jesus is speaking today in today's gospel is related to the festival occurring in that time. But the message is to bring the gospel to all people. You might recall that there was a disciple by the name of Philip in today's gospel who was a key network for some of the Gentiles who wanted to talk to Jesus. This relates to how the church in unification with other denominations. Jesus tells us in John chapter 12, verse 32, uh, and I, when I am lifted from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Now Christ calls upon all people to be drawn to him. It is a calling to expand our church from our current state to be transformed by God's only begotten son. To unite the Jew or Gentile, white or black, Asian or Pacific Islander, man or woman, as one in Christ. Come to Jesus Christ to build the kingdom of God. Now, the church today is so busy serving the world from its own denominational perspective. We're always, we're always uh, we, we serve church, we, we serve the world as, like I said in the last, um, in the last uh, worship service, that we, we like to do this Starbucks versus Main Street coffee type of ordeal. Go, don't go to Starbucks because that's not real coffee, right? <laughs> go to Main Street coffee because it's more organic, right? So the, our, churches, our churches are so busy serving the world in this way. Come to the Methodist church because we're more open. Go, don't go to the Catholic church because you've got to do a confession, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's how we're serving the world today. We're serving the world from our denominational perspective. Now, but this keeps us in our own spaces. It, that's what it does. It keeps us comfortable in our own spaces. And it builds more hostility between you and I and also the fundamentalist and the progressive. So we should be working together because we have a common ground in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to look at your neighbor and say these things, okay? So neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, oh neighbor, we are in it together. We are in it together. Now, now, church family. We are in it together. We, we're in it to lose it, right? If you win, I win, okay? So if the festival today in today's gospel is celebrating a time of harvest and a time of planting new soil, then it is also a festival during this Lenten season that you are walking in right now to lift up Christ to unite all people. All people are one under Christ. All churches who believe and confess Jesus Christ are one church. You can be a Methodist, you can be a Catholic, an Anglican, you can even be a Mormon. As you confess Jesus Christ, you are one under the cross. All communities are one under Christ. To live in Christ is to live for all. We are constantly seeking ways to unite our world. We are still working on that right now. We are. We think that living in division or, or pointing the finger and blaming each other is the answer to move forward. When we live in a life in Christ, here's the difference. When we live a life in Christ in which we are lifting Jesus up, the Methodist hymn says these words. These are very powerful words. Here's the words. Lift high the cross. The love of Christ proclaims 
till all the world adores his sacred name. Let me say these words again. Lift up, lift high the cross. The love of Christ proclaims till all the world adore his sacred name. Now, church family, you see today from your homes, in church, in your, in your vehicles when you're driving, while listening to a radio or, or seeing it on your smartphone or on your television, the division in our world today. Our country is divided today. Our politics, our education, our communities, and even our churches are divided today. This world needs an emergency restoration. It does. The psalmist this week says these words. Restore to me the joy of, our, of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Here's the words again, okay? Hear me closely, my church family. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore happiness to me that you died on the cross for me, Jesus. And sustain in me a willing spirit. Keep it within me. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but every day. Keep it in me, Lord. Keep that faith burning so that I may contribute to this healing of the world. Now, the only way to bring our country closer to God is to lift Jesus up. It, doesn't, it might sound simple, but here, here, is, here it is. Here's the nitty-gritty, okay? The only way to bring our country closer to God, it is not simple as it, as it seems, is to lift Jesus up. That means... Lifting Jesus up in our standards, in our policies, our workplaces, our schools, our families. Lifting Jesus up in all we do as his people. Now, I'm not, not, I'm not encouraging you to go with a picket sign or to make t-shirts and say, Jesus, 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 in public. I don't want HR coming after you, okay? Now, here's the thing, right? Your, your, your heart transcends what you're about to say. Your actions speak for you, and your actions are, are louder than words. We can lift Jesus up in how we bring people closer to God. I, I've always had this experience. Like you, you, used to be a lot, you used to be a football player a lot, too. You used to be a rugby player. Now you're a pastor? Don't, don't, don't seem coherent and logical. You go from a physical hurting people type of mentality to a loving and being more patient with people mentality. That is what Jesus is all about. It's our actions. Lift up Jesus to this world. We, here, here it is. What are we lifting up when, when we lift up Jesus, right? That's the question. What are we lifting up when we lift up Jesus? We're not lifting up being Methodist, right? We're not lifting up that we are more holier than the other. Here's what we're lifting up when we lift up Jesus, that this world does not preach and hungers for every day. We are lifting up love of God, the love of God. We are lifting up the love of God, the love that you share with your family, the, the love that brings you here to church. We lift up Jesus. Now, look at your neighbor one more time and say these words. Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. neighbor. Lift Jesus up. Now, lastly, my church family, when, just, when Jesus was lifted up on the cross, he said these words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Church family, this is what makes Jesus important in our church missions. Because he sees past your selfishness. He sees past what you have struggled with and your downfalls with. He sees past that. He sees you as an image bearer, a creation, or a human being. This is the calling to the church to open its doors. Not to open its doors as a denomination, but a body for all of God's people. The tabernacle is here. The tabernacle carried the cross on the Ovia Dolorosa. The, the tabernacle was crucified on the place of skulls. It was buried and it resurrected after three days so that you and I when we leave this earth, we do not have to bear with death, but we change our location. We're going from one location to another. 
Thanks be to Jesus for defeating death on the cross. The tabernacle was here. He is here now, and he will be here tomorrow and until this world is no more. That means Jesus Christ is here. New victorious scenes of it. That is your new victory. It is new harvest, new life, new hope. When Jesus is lifted up, my church family, we all win. You win, I win. We all win. When we lift it up, everybody else that confesses Jesus wins. No one higher, no one lower. Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able as we sing our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory. got some reminders for you. Uh, not too many. Uh, flowers today are in celebration of the Lippitz 57th anniversary. Woo-hoo. How do you do it? So harvest of Thanksgiving, thank you for all that brought uh, for the food closet. Uh, join the U- uh, United M- Women's in Faith uh, Heavenly Holiday Craft Team first and third Mondays, 9.30 to noon. All welcome. Supplies provided. And I believe that's tomorrow, right? Yes. Accepting gently used gifts, uh, jewelry, and decor items that others might uh, buy. Uh, no clothing, please. Uh, third Mondays, 10 a.m. Uh, to noon. Uh, questions ask Allison, Sue, Hanley, or Marcia Gallegos. Uh, member care. Uh, this will be a riveting uh, meeting this Tuesday at 5 p.m. Okay, go ahead. Commercial time. It has been a long time since we have had an all-church cleanup party for the exterior. So, 
Please mark your calendars for Saturday, April 13th. What's that date? Saturday, April 13th, 9 to noon. And lunch will be served. This is weather permitting, by the way. We have a bunch of stuff to do. Uh, the iron gazebo up by the uh, Memorial Garden needs to be painted. The chairs need to be painted. Tables need to be sanded and varnished. Uh, a little paint, cleanup of uh, weeds in our garden area. Uh, we're going to relocate the stakes out front that we put the banners on for our craft fair. We're going to reset them so they make more sense. Uh, the biggie, though, is we are going to begin setting up and cleaning up an area for the youth uh, playground. Woohoo! Woohoo is right. Yeah. We're going to fence off a part. We're going to clean it up. We're going to put some playground uh, equipment in, which, where's Len? We, so we if, need money. If you would like to donate towards the youth's playground, uh, we're not quite sure what the total will be, but, you know, it's going to be astronomical. No, not really. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a very basic playground set, but uh, we have to put in the fencing and some sand. So if you would like to donate specifically to that need, please make your check uh, out to the church, of course, and in the memo, put playground. Or if you want to put it in an envelope, market playground, it'll get to the right place. We appreciate your help. And Laura is very excited about this, and yes. so are the kids. Yes, the, there is a sign-up sheet on the back. We ask uh, for people to sign up if they know they're coming, so we know how many people that uh, we can cook for. We'll the sign-ups for uh, the cleanup day, not yeah. for the playground equipment. Yeah. Bob. Yes, yes. Uh, the uh, Len will be uh, barbecuing by Braille, as usual. <laughs> And uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have sodas and drinks, and we'll, we will provide uh, the paint, the stain, <laughs> probably the sandpaper. And I just got a good one from, uh, where'd she go? Oh, Pam, we need to get some mulch and stuff to put around the gardens after we clean them up to make this place look as pretty as it can be. It's a great place now. We want to make it be better. So please, uh, put your name on the list. We appreciate it. Are you done now? I will shut up and go away. Let, let the Bob is let leaving us out of the here. building. <laughs> All right. Let me say a benediction for y'all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah.